here comes the boss. Yeah, and our girl Friday. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hello, boys. Hi, Faye. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hey, what's all that? Yeah, what, what's the mystery, Bill? You and Peg have been cutting out paper dolls all week. Oh, they're not paper dolls. They're obstacles. And Elmer. Obstacles? Elmer? <laughs> oh, ask Bill. He explained it all to me, but I still don't understand. Well, we'll get to Elmer and the obstacles in a minute. Tonight, we're going to compare comfort features of the Chrysler Windsor and all GM medium price cars. Now, we'll make our comparisons with the Oldsmobile Super 88 because it's in the Windsor price class and because it has the same basic body as the other GM cars. So, what we say about the Super 88 will also apply to all GM cars in our price class. The only noticeable comfort difference in GM bodies is the two-inch longer rear compartment of the Buick Electra, Oldsmobile 98, and Cadillac. This means two inches more rear door width and rear legroom. Excuse me, Bill. Yeah? But uh, why a special meeting on comfort features? Because we've got the strongest story on comfort in the entire industry, Fred. If we can get this idea across convincingly to prospects, we surely will close more deals. In a moment, we're going to examine the GM car side by side with a Chrysler Windsor to see exactly what we can say about comfort. But first, I want to go over some details that'll help us appreciate the importance of selling the comfort of our cars. This book, you might say, is the voice of the people. It contains results of a national survey showing what owners of 1959 cars thought about their new cars. It pins down some facts pertinent to selling Chrysler Comfort. For instance, take this question. Is comfort important in selling medium price cars? <laughs> oh, you bet it is. In the survey, owners of both medium and low price General Motors makes were asked to rate specific comfort features of their cars. Comparisons of rating show that Chevrolet owners are more satisfied with the ease of getting in and out, seat comfort and roominess than are owners of the GM medium price cars. But here's the point. All GM cars use the same basic body. So here's a difference in opinion on practically identical comfort features and dimensions. In other words, medium price car owners expect and demand comfort. They're more conscious of comfort. They're paying editors' lines. Well, according to the survey, Chrysler is far ahead of GM medium price cars right down the line. Chrysler has double the GM ratings on ease of getting in and out and is substantially better in seat comfort and roominess. Now, these surveys concern 1959 cars, but the results hold true for 1960, because this year, our advantages over competition are far greater in every comfort category. While GM cars use the same bodies as in 59, we have the all-new Chrysler Unibody, with increases in door openings, seat heights, leg room, and, well, let's look at the cars. Now, Peggy has volunteered to be our model to test the woman's angle All in comfort. Right, All right. Here she comes. The line forms to the right, boys. Peg, uh, bring along the cardboard cutouts, will you? And Elmer, too? <laughs> and Elmer. Now, as you see, Oldsmobile still has the curved windshield post. This cardboard is an exact duplicate of it. When we put it on the Chrysler later, you'll see how it takes away valuable inches of entry room. GM cars have about two inches less front door height, about the width of this cardboard strip. The GM driver must watch his head when getting in and out. Say, Bill, Olds doesn't have two position door checks. Hey, I almost missed that. No, they don't, Earl. GM passengers have to hold the door open as they squeeze through in tight parking places. On Chrysler, the first position check is ideal in a tight spot. It holds the door open for the passenger as he climbs out. More convenient, more comfortable. Uh-oh, GM still has a low seat. Yeah, no change there. This cutout duplicates GM's front seat cushion. You'll see what it looks like in a Chrysler later. Well, uh, what's the story on legroom, Bill? It's tough to get a clear picture of how we compare unless we have an accurate way of showing the difference. And that's why we brought Elmer along. So that's Elmer. Oh, yeah. oh. Yep, we've deliberately designed him to take a snug fit all around in the GM car. That way, any extra space we see around him when he's in the Chrysler will represent bonus room, extra comfort space. Now notice when we put him inside the GM car, 
Elmer's legs fit tightly against the floorboard. That's GM's maximum legroom with the seat all the way back. We made his lap fit right up against the steering wheel. There's no clearance here at all. And Elmer's hat is flush against the headlining, GM's maximum headroom height. In a moment, you'll see how much better off Elmer is in the Chrysler. Before that, though... Hey, what's this gadget, Bill? That, my friend, is for comparing legroom. Oh. It represents GM's maximum rear legroom. It's a tight fit in Olds. When we put this gadget in Chrysler, it will show how much more legroom we have. This one, I can guess, it's to compare tunnel height. And it's cut to fit the contour of the floor. It indicates the deep GM floor well, high and wide drive shaft tunnel, and high wide sills, all of which take up valuable footroom. I see. By the way, notice this narrow door opening. See how a pattern of my size 10 gunboats practically wedges between the door and the cushion? Remember this tight fit when we try it for size in the Chrysler. Say, Bill, something I can't understand is why Oldsmobile has such a wide sill. I'm sure they've had plenty of complaints. Why don't they do something about it? Good question, Earl. But Olds can't do anything about it with its present body and frame design. Let me show you. Let's say this is the Olds frame. You're looking at a cross-sectional front view of the frame side rails. Now, you see the body on the frame? Notice that the body extends outside the frame. Then the floor drops down around the box section. That's why the sill is wide, why the floor is narrow between the sill and drive shaft hump. By comparison, Chrysler's unibody, with body and frame combined, provides a narrow sill. The sill is actually the side rail. The drop down to the floor is not as deep. Our floor is wider between the sill and drive shaft hump, allows more room for the feet. As we've already made clear, GM uses the same body on all its cars. Their one body must be made to fit Oldsmobile's and Buick's side rail frames and Cadillac's and Pontiac's hourglass shaped frame. The hourglass frame has an extra steel reinforcement over the drive shaft. To accommodate this, the hump in the floor pan of the body has to be extra large. Now, since all GM cars share the same body, they share the same extra sized tunnel hump too. I see. On the Chrysler, since there is no separate frame to get in the way, we make the hump over the drive shaft as small as possible. 